Hello everyone, my name is Austin Ellsworth. I'm in your system programming class for the summer semester with Dr. Vijay Puse. Um, this is my to showcase my SPY uh, project that we had. So as most of you know, we started the project off with a TXT file containing about 2300 lines of comma delimited information giving us data about SPY put and call options and we were tasked with importing that into a C application and processing it into some data that we can draw conclusions from. So one of the things I knew I wanted to do was in addition to just drawing statistical conclusions from like mathematics averaging or uh, finding minimum and maximum values is I also wanted to create some cool graphs and I didn't know how I was going to do it. Um, but I ended up finding a C library called PB Plots, which I can show you guys how I use later on in the video. Um, and it's, it's really cool, it offers a lot of customization, and I ended up pretty happy with the results I got out of that. So when, I go, when we go down to my uh, main function here, and uh, just as a disclaimer, I decided not to separate this project into multiple C files just because I didn't feel like it was too lengthy to keep organized in a uh, single file, but I probably should have done that. So to get started here, the first thing I did was I opened up the stream from the text document we have here. And then I called a function I created called get line count. And I called this function right off the get go because I needed to know how, how many lines I was going to need to initialize X number of elements in different arrays that I created, which I also created an array for the dates, put call ratios, put volume, call volume, total volume, and a general index array that I used later on when I was creating my graphs. Based on the common delimited fields inside the file, I found that 128 uh, characters was a pretty nice even number for allocating memory for my character elements. Then I initialized my row count to zero and looped through the input stream. Now, um, I started off uh, copying obviously using string string copy in uh, a, to, a to I and A to F to copy the files and make sure that they're in the correct format. But if you look down here, I act, actually skipped the first row or row zero because I didn't want to deal with um, input verification for the first line. Obviously, date will copy into a text text uh, array just fine, but I skipped line zero for these fields because I didn't want to deal with the errors and I basically just avoided probably at least another 25 to 30 lines of code by doing this. Um, then you could see down here in my main function, I'm just printing the uh, statistics that I came up with based on my calculations and uh, we'll go a little more in depth to how those work. So. Um, obviously, average calculating average is pretty simple. Basically, it's just a uh, function that returns a float, uh, input the total number of lines from the file, just an integer to know how many times to loop through, and then inputs the array that we are going to be calculating the average for. And this is where all these different arrays uh, come in handy because I can plug each array into the same function. So I use this calculate average function for uh, call put ratio, put volume, call volume, etc. Um, the other functions that are a little bit different are the integer uh, that gets returned by the return minimum index and return maximum index. So instead of just returning the actual minimum or maximum value, I decided I want to uh, return the index that that value was found at. So that way when I printed the data out later, I could map that index with not only the value of uh, what the data was, but also the date that it had occurred at. So if you go down to like right here where it says minimum put call ratio, uh, you could see I have the uh, float value and then also a string value right here. 
and those both come off of the same minimum index value right here from that uh, uh, function that returns the integer instead of the actual value. So it made the function pretty versatile. After I got everything working correctly for coming up with the statistics that I wanted to see mathematically, I got to work on making some graphs. So this is a little bit about how the PB chart works, or I'm sorry, PB plots. So uh, I could, if you look right here, this looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. So uh, everything that I have highlighted right here can actually be pretty much replaced with these uh, two lines that I commented out. However, I decided to go with the uh, more detailed configuration because it gave me the options to like uh, format chart titles and line thickness and uh, X and Y axis labels. So don't let this intimidate you from using the PB plot uh, C library. It's actually really easy to set up and use and the documentation's good as well. So I guess uh, we might as well run this. And here you can see uh, the statistics are outputted correctly. It shows uh, not only the minimum and maximum value for the statistics I wanted, but also the date that I, uh, the date that those values occurred on. So, for example, uh, you can easily draw the conclusion that on December 13th of 2016, since the minimum uh, or since the put call ratio was really low, that might have been a bullish market. Uh, where on the other side, on August 24th, 2015, you'd be looking at a much more bearish market with a put call ratio at 3.77. I decided not to calculate the minimum or average or the minimum or average total volume statistics because I honestly didn't find them very useful, although I'm not a uh, trading expert by any means. Now let's go into the fun stuff. This, these right here are the charts that were created as defined right here and right here. And so you can see uh, we got a pretty cool output here. I uh, overlaid a separate slope formula to kind of illustrate the average slope against all the, um, the large number of data in the chart behind it. But here we can see the SPY call volume chart and now I'll pull up the put volume chart, which also shows a uh, similar positive slope uh, that I would also kind of interpret as steady market growth. Again, I'm not a um, stock expert by any means, but uh, one other conclusion that I would probably draw from this project is that uh, index funds like the S&P 500 are all around pretty good investments investments that tend to pay off pretty well over time and recover from any uh, drastic sudden movements. So thank you for watching my project overview and hope enjoy the rest of your day.